churches have failed on people. That's what I'm saying. So called black men, you are the lowest state and you are the greatest thing God ever created. That's what I'm saying. It's time for you men to come back in your place, rule this earth like God made it for you to If you're not as real, you ain't no kin to me. If you don't fit the 12, then you my enemy. We are in the land of our captivity. Someday we going home, so you best believe. If you're not as real, you ain't no kin to me. If you don't fit the 12, then you my enemy. We are in the land of our captivity. Someday we going home, so you best believe. Open your eyes, turn to awake. We make up the torch as of Israel today. We the real Jews, make no mistakes. They in our homeland ain't only they faking it. Ain't about color, it's more about race. God chose a nation to rule in this place. Jacob, he love, he saw, he hate. You find out in Malachi, one of verse trade. Trade, threats, you know, three. Jerusalem is a mother land, above and it's free. There's Galatians, Quattro, B, A, B, C. Get it, got it, the friend, they peach. If I gotta fast for a couple of weeks, just to get the key. Then no will let it be I am keeping the laws I keep every beast Keep every Sabbath Brick bread than I drink Who's ready for Passover 2016 In a month of a bit Will we gather in me There's a whole lot of laughter We dance and we sing I'm living for seven days Out the week Can't wait to see What the elders gon' teach Pull out my Bible Then pull out my seat That's the spiritual food Don't ever teach Some say truth hurts Read it and weep If you ain't tryna hit me Then move up the street When I exit your city I dust up my feet Lace up my boots That's equipped with them cleats Lift up my voice Like a trumpet in speed You can see my zeal Hear my zeal All in my speech See that I'm serious I don't show no teeth we are Imperial to find that it and cannot be number like Santa. Let me stop playing. Where's the black man at that's looking for salvation? Where's your boy. black man at that's gonna rule his household? Where you at? We're looking for you. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So when you read these curses in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, brother, it's going to break down all the curses that the Most High put on us and that they are only upon the children of Israel. That's right. All right? If you got another question, come up, brother. How you doing, brother? What's your name, sir? Steven. Steven? All right, all right. Officer Kimmy Well, what's your question, brother? How you living in sin? Okay, all right. So first of all, what is sin? I'm sorry, say again. Under the Ten Commandments? Okay, you close, you close. Alright, we're going to read to you the biblical definition of sin. Right? Because the actual definition of sin is found in the Bible. Alright, so that there'll be no misunderstanding with us. Read that. First John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. So the subject right here is sin. Because you want to know how, how is it that I'm living in sin, right? He said I'm living in sin. Right, okay. Read that again for the top. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So in order for you to sin, you have to have laws that you're breaking, okay? No. If you don't have laws to break, then you're not in sin, all right? So sin is the transgression of the laws. Now, let me ask you this. Are the laws done away with? No, absolutely not. The laws are not done away with. Very good, because if they were, there would be no such thing as sin, right? Right. So now. Bring it out. Good job, right. Let me get Numbers 1538. So we're going to go through a few laws, all right? This is a law for all Israelite men and women, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right? Read it out. All right, read this. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them bridges in the borders of their garments. So Moses was commanded to speak to the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that they wear fringes, that's what these are, in the borders of their garments. All right? Read on. Throughout their generation. That means forever, brother. Forever. I'll praise it. So if you see some of our northern kingdom, brother, what do they have? They have fringes on their garments. All right? So this isn't a new thing. This is something that we've supposed to have been doing throughout our generation. All right? Read on. And, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue 
So, as you see our fringes, we also have a ribbon of blue on them, all right? Let's see why. And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So that we do what? Which means we do what? Sin. Sin, exactly. Because sin is what? Breaking the commandments of the Most High God, right? Right, right. So we're supposed to look at these fringes, and as I was using an example, today's the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be buying and selling. I might want to, you know, it's hot out here. Let me go over there and get a, uh, something to drink, all right? Oh, wait a minute. I'm an Israelite. I'm not supposed to be buying and selling on the Sabbath. I remember that that's a law that was given only to the Israelites. I can't buy now. I got to wait till I get home. Okay? That's right. one sin. You went to church on Sunday. Who taught you that? Well, we know that ain't from my heritage. 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 I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in a reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture at Hartford, Kansas, February 18th, 1884. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. The Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1893. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, A.D. 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Peter Geierman, The Convert's Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 2nd edition, 1910, page 50. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Stephen Keenan, A Doctrinal Catechism, page 174. There is but one church on the face of the earth which has the power or claims power to make laws binding on the conscience, binding before God, binding under penalty of hell fire. For instance, the institution of Sunday. What right has any other church to keep this day? You answer by virtue of the third commandment. The papacy changed the fourth commandment and called it the third, which says, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. But Sunday is not the Sabbath. Any schoolboy knows that Sunday is the first day of the week. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who will prove by the Bible alone that Sunday is the day we are bound to keep and no one has called for the money. It was the Holy Catholic Church that changed the day of rest from Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day of the week. T. 
T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture delivered in 1893. Thank you, Bishop. So, but, but why would you do that? If you knew, why would you do that? Well, me, myself. Who made the weeks? Who made the weeks? Yeah. Who made them? Yeah. Who created all things? Okay, so we're gonna bring it out. All praises. We're gonna bring it out to you. To me, in my in my in my in my opinion, okay. every day. Okay, now now listen to what you just said. Every day. To me, in my opinion, right? Yeah. Drop that, give me some uh Proverbs 3 and 5. Yep. So you said to me, yeah. in my opinion. You can't say no okay. thing. Wait a minute. Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah, I believe in the Bible. So when we read out of the Bible, are you gonna believe what the Bible says? Okay. Good answer. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So you said to me, right? So what are you doing? Well, what? I'm just asking. When you say to me, what are you doing? You lean into your own understanding, right? What does the Bible say? Read it again. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in who? The Lord with all thine heart. And do what? And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. All right? So just for future reference, when you start out an answer by saying, in my opinion or the way I see it, that's doing what? Let's lean into your own understanding and know that the Bible speaks expressly against that, okay? All right, so go ahead. All right. To me, it's adultery. To me, it's adultery. I'm, I'm overweight. That's it. That's Can you find a scripture in the Bible that says being overweight is a sin? Take care of the temple, coach. Take care of your body. Give me that in the Corinthians. Okay. But I don't, I actually, no. Let's deal with the first thing you said. Let's go to the south. Let's go to the south. Sin, not overweight. Right. I'm free now. Being a little all the same in God's eyes. What if you're too skinny? Is that a sin? I guess who? No, it's not. Might not be taking care of yourself. You're skinny. Right. Go ahead. I'm, 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 understand this, sir. Understand this. What we're going to do is we're going to read what's in the Bible. All right, we go by what thus saith the Lord, okay? Because we just read, lean not to your own understanding, right? All right, so now let's, let's first deal with the Sabbath day. Because you said you grew up on going to church on Sunday. A lot of our people have grown up going to church on Sundays. So let's deal with that. Bring Exodus out. 20 and 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the seventh of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger. Okay, so, okay, hold on just a second. So the Bible says to remember the Sabbath day. Why does the Bible say remember the Sabbath day? Because remember now, you, you just said, you grew up going to Sunday church. Why does it say remember? If you don't remember, that means you what? You forgot. You forgot. As a people, listen to what I'm saying though. You was taught by somebody that either didn't know or forgot, right? As a people, part of what's got us in this condition and being in America, as captives and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth is because we broke God's commandments. Remember what sin is, the transgression of God's laws. He said that we must remember the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Today is the Sabbath. Sunday is the first day of the week. Sunday, we got from who? Who worship? What is, what is Sunday worship? 
That's idolatry. That's worshiping the sun. That's idol worship. All right. So, okay, sir. Well, we're going to see. Let me ask you this. Who is this picture right here? Who is that? Who is that? Hey, hey, soldier, hold that picture up. Hold that picture up. Hold it on. Just, just pick up the sign. Hold it up. Hold it up. Who is this? That's Jesus? What do you say, sir? No? What do you say? Where he went at? You say that's Jesus? Okay. Historical reference. Well, outside, it says, when I was a slave, memoirs from the slave narrative. So this is a book. White people went and interviewed our ancestors, the first generation right after slavery was over, and they asked them, how was slavery? And you said Sunday worship. This is what your ancestor, who was in the cotton fields, said about Sunday. It says here, when I was a slave, on page 32. Louder. Bring it out. We had the best mistress and master in the world, and they was Christian folks, and they taught us to be Christian like two. Every Sunday morning, old master would have all us niggas in the house. He would sing and pray and read the Bible to us all. When I got grown, I went the Baptist way. Old master took the whole family and all the slaves to church with him. Did you hear that? Now that's history that backs up the Bible. Uh, officer, can you call that out again? Show him that. Why don't you say the Bible that? Hold on, hold on a second, sir. Hold on, hold on a second. This book is called When I Was a Slave. It's, it's written, let me see here, by Norman R. Yetman. All right, this is slave memoirs that are in the uh, House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. It's a, uh, the uh, Library of Congress is where these are. They just put it in a book so their people can be edified on how you used to live in the cotton fields, your ancestors. They never meant for you to actually read it to find out that Sunday came from your slave masters. God said the seventh day That's right. of the week. Hold that. Hold that. Give me, give me, give me, uh, um, 20, uh, Deuteronomy 2837. Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna answer that right next. I'm gonna answer that next. I'm gonna finish with this about the Sabbath. So, as the officer just pointed out, not only through the Bible, which is most important, but it's even backed up through the history of our slave masters that Sunday worship is unrighteous. It's unholy, brother. You must repent as an Israelite in order for you to gain the kingdom, in order for you to have salvation. And we're going to prove that. That book? The Bible? Okay. If he ain't gonna let you do nothing else, why would you put that out? Read this. Good question. He said, if they didn't want you to know nothing else was true, why would they read why would they let you read this? As the officer just said, it wasn't meant for you to read. Right. They All right. Remember, for hundreds of years, we were not able to read. If they found you with a book, they would kill you, right? Now. Read that. Give me that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. What is one of the proverbs that is spoken about the so-called black man? If you want to hide something from a nigga, you put it where? In a book. In a book. That is a common proverb used against us. That's why the officer said, they didn't expect us to read that. We search the scriptures, we search history, we do research to come out and teach our people who they are. The, the pits and the snaps. The, 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 uh, the pits and the snares that keep us enslaved in the mind. All right, brother? We doing this for you, brother. Hello?
home is I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.